Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's retro review here is the classic adventure for all editions of RuneQuest, although this is for the third edition, Apple Lane. The cover is a bona fide classic, with Gringle's duck companion Quack John in all his glory. I never quite understood ducks and baboons in RuneQuest, but I suppose variety is the spice of life. Right, to the inside. I particularly like this small inscription on the inside cover, Miyasaris bless this book and confound those who criticise it. In the RuneQuest world of Glorantha, Isaris is the Orlanthi god of trade and communications. Let's hope I don't displease them. Firstly, we begin with the introduction by RuneQuest creator Greg Stafford and a few notes on rule conventions by Lynn Willis and Charlie Crank. We then have a section on how the then deluxe rules would apply to this supplement, mostly spirit magic, bound spirits and divine magic. It then goes on to describe the hamlet of Apple Lane itself. Apple Lane is a village surrounded by orchards. It has a fairly simple setup, inn, guild hall, few temples, a general store, etc. Of note here are the Temple to All Deities and Gringle's Pawn Shop. We'll get to Gringle's in a bit. The next section deals with tribal initiation, an important aspect of life for the tribes of the surrounding area and Sartar. They even include a folk poem as an extra level of detail. I kind of like this kind of thing, and I think it fits. The first of two beginners adventures in this supplement is to do with Gringle's Pawn Shop. Now, these adventures have been out since 1978, so I'm not going to feel bad about spoiling them at this point. You're approached by Gringle, the pawn shop owner, and asked to defend his pawn shop from an attack that his divinations of all good will happen that evening. He's come into possession of a relic from a local baboon tribe, who rightly want it back. You're given a map of the pawn shop with all of the rooms described in detail. Little do the hapless adventures know, but the baboons have hired a local group of bandits to help them, which will undoubtedly surprise the players. The method of attack is described in great detail, so I imagine not a lot is left to chance, and all characters on both sides are statted out completely. We have a handout of Apple Lane's inhabitants as well as its enemies, which I can categorically say has some of the worst character portrait art I've ever seen. The second adventure is to do with a local landmark, the Rainbow Mounds. The adventurers are charged with putting a stop to a band of thieving trollkin that have taken up residence in the aforementioned Rainbow Mounds and have become a bit more cocky of late. The mounds themselves are described in lush detail, and the adventure itself has a few twists and turns in it. The Newtlings and their broken statue and the Great Mother Lizard, these definitely give this adventure an edge over normal run-of-the-mill beginning adventures. In conclusion, let me just say that I was not about to turn into an old-school classic here. I went into this review with the appreciation that this adventure was originally published in 1978 and the player demands have changed, evolved and become more sophisticated since then. But modern games have the advantage of hindsight. When this was originally done there was literally nothing else and the adventures like this paved the way for the current era. Upon finishing reading this I fully acknowledge how wrong I was. There's a reason that this supplement has stood the test of time and the reason is that the love and attention to detail here is almost palpable. There's a very good reason that Apple Lane is held in such high regard, and the reason is that it is excellent. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to check out my other reviews. Bud out.